So I bless the Lord. Today, as I told you um, in the, the, the Sunday school, that our theme today is don't be alarmed. This is only a test. Don't be alarmed. It's only a test. And I told uh, those of you that um, were born before 1970, you may can relate to what I'm saying. Those of you that were born after 1970, you might not remember that they used to have the station identification on the three networks and they would do the uh, broadcast or whatever it's called, emergency, where to, if something goes wrong, Russia's getting ready to drop a bomb on us or, or something, your TV would go, Woo! and you sit there irritated and want to get back to the ball game and they say, don't get alarmed. This is only a test. The, 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 uh, or, or, or allowing you to uh, get station identification. So uh, God wants to encourage you because once again, uh, we're going through some things and, 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 and you must remember the hardest time in anyone's life is right before the blessing. When the devil knows that you are two steps away from the victory, he will fight you more than you've ever been fought in your life. They will find some things wrong with you that you never thought was wrong with you. Uh, the kids will act in a way that you never dreamt they would act. People on the job will start talking to you in a way that you never thought they'd talk to you. And, 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 and it's all about the devil knows what's going on. He's trying to not just uh, 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 mess you up, but he wants you to lose your mind. He wants you to uh, actually fall short. And, 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 but I don't want to just talk about uh, 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 the things that the devil bring your way intentional. I'm going to take a few minutes to kind of talk about those things that God brings your way. Uh-oh, that sometimes God opens the door for some things to come. You know, uh, 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 I, I did something uh, last week that I haven't done in years. I actually uh, uh, dropped some classes in school, and I actually withdrew. And I'm um, getting so close, you know, I was a 4.0 student, and I just didn't want any Fs on my transcript. So I said, you know, I took the easy way out. I'm just going to withdraw from that because I'm going to flunk it anyway. I got so busy running back and forth to Indianapolis and trying to keep up with the council and all that. Looked up, it was midterm time, and I wasn't ready to take the test. And, and, and you got to learn that you can't pass to the next course unless you take the test. Uh, you, you don't go to the next level. You don't become a sophomore from freshman if you don't take your finals. And so, so, uh, and so hopefully uh, what happened to me that I was able to catch it in time and say, I, I, I'm not going to be prepared and I'm going to get an F on that test. But the children of God, I want you to realize some of the things that you're going through in life is only because God is trying to push you to the next level. God is actually trying to give you what he promised you. God is actually attempting to move you into your place in life so you can walk in your authority. Don't you know, you, you, you can't go to graduate school until you take your finals in undergrad school. Well, you don't go on to high school for middle school unless you take the finals. You, they, they don't pass you to the 10th grade when you didn't take the test in the eighth grade. In every process in life, there's a form of advancement, the process of qualification. So until you qualify yourself, you can't move to the next level. Now, one would say, why would God put me through hell? To do? It's not so much as God trying to put you through hell. It's only a test. Now, now, now let, 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 before we go through our scriptures, let, let me just uh, 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 give you this. Let's go to Genesis, because um, I got to get this out of the way. Genesis 20, is it Genesis 22nd? Genesis 22. Just to verify what I'm saying. Don't panic. It's only a test. I know it's, um, and, 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 and we're only going to read just two, two verses right there. Genesis 22, 1 and 2. And then I'm going to get to my main scripture. Genesis 22, 1 and 2. You can stand if you desire. But um, now I'm reading from the, the NIV. The NIV says, I, do you have it? Okay, if you're still looking, I'll give you a couple, about, a couple more seconds. But the Genesis 22, 1 and 2, this is God talking to Abraham. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. And the NIV says, test Abraham. 
and said unto him, Abraham, he said, behold, here I am. And he said, take now thy son, your only son, whom you love. Go into the land of Moriah and offer him there for burnt sacrifice, burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell you. You may be seated. I just, I just had to say that to qualify what I was saying, that God tells the man to kill his son that he promised. God tells you to take the thing that you love and get rid of it. God tells you where you were wanting to be healthy that you're going to be sick a while. God tells you that when you've done everything right with your children and want them to turn around and just talk to you any kind of way. Come on, somebody. It's only a test. But I guess the point that I'm trying to impress upon you is the only way you're going to get to the next level is you got to take the test. Don't get alarmed. But when you take the test, it qualifies you to go to the next level. You won't go to the next level unless you take the test. So therefore, I, 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 my time is running. So we, we, we're going to go to the 37th chapter uh, or the 40th chapter of Genesis. And I might just skip and just kind of paraphrase what's going on. We're talking about Joseph. Joseph, and in the 40th chapter of Genesis, it talks about the worst two years of his life, the worst two years of Joseph's life from this perspective. And how do we get there? So first, let's read. I'm still within my 15 minutes, so we can read that. Y'all don't mind, do you? Well, if you do, well, I'm preaching, so I'm going to tell y'all what to do. <laughs> I'm the one got the microphone today, so y'all just got to do what I ask. <laughs> okay, let's go to uh, Genesis. And believe me, you, you'll get the point because I really want to impress upon you what God has given me today. This is not anything. I'm not preaching this because it's a good sermon to, 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 to get everybody happy. I'm preaching this to get you prepared to go to the next level. You know, I, 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 I didn't like uh, when, when we were right around the time we were getting ready to have the vote and, 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 and I was real worried about uh, did I do everything right? It was final time. And I, I, I wish that I could have called the dean of the college and said, put it off. I got something I got to do. You know, but the test wasn't waiting on me because I had other things in life. Uh, uh, I had to take the test in order to pass that course because you can't get where you need to go unless you pass the course. Well, you don't want anybody in the dental office that didn't take the test, right? Didn't take the dental exam. Well, I got straight A's, but did you take the exam? Well, I'm practicing law, but did you take the bar? Because when you pass the test, you prove that you're qualified to be where you're supposed to be. If you can't pass the test, I don't care how many years you went to school. You're not working on my mouth. You're pulling my tooth and you can't pass the dental exam. How many of us think that we're qualified to be somewhere in God, to get something from God, to do something for God, but we won't take the test? Maybe the test is allowing that person that you don't really care for to talk to you any kind of way. How do you react in those situations? Well, how can God use you unless you prove to God that you're qualified to be where you're supposed to be? Maybe the test is trusting God. The Bible says in the 22nd chapter of Genesis, he speaks to Abraham and he tells Abraham, remember that boy I promised you? Remember that blessing I gave you? Give it back. Oh, man. Isn't it strange how sometimes the paradoxical view of God, he seemed to be so good, but now it kind of seemed not really good. I mean, I go to church to be happy. I go to God to get a smile on my face. It's not always like that. God says, sometime I need to know that you're ready to move to the next level. I can't send you to the next level unless you're qualified to survive on that level. I can't send you somewhere to let you get killed, to let you get destroyed. God loves you too much. 
So in the book of Genesis, we're getting ready to read Joseph. First, let me get you up to remember Joseph. He he in the 37th chapter of Genesis, it tells a, a variety of things. Joseph is 17 years old, young man, and God begins to give him favor. Now, when God shows favor on you, you may can have a little too much feedback there. When God begins to show you favor, people are not always going to like you. Come on now. You know, I thought because I go to church and because I, I say positive things, they were going to treat me. Sometimes folk going to hate you. So when God began to show Joseph favor, remember people of God begin to favor you. So I believe that one reason, well, I know you love me, Elder Sumners. I, I felt that I, one reason that Elder Sumners, I found favor with him because I had found favor with God. When God shows you favor, God's people will think like God. God's people will, you, you wonder, and then other people in church that's kind of carnal. Why does he like Kevin so much? Maybe because God loves Kevin. I think like God. And so, but why I said that? Because Joseph's family got mad because Jacob began to show favor to Joseph. Now, that was kind of dysfunctional. You know, we, we get caught up in our ways. He was, he, he was uh, uh, Jacob's favorite wife's son, so they, they kind of fed into it. But because J Jacob didn't uh, 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 show as much favor, and Jacob was older when he had Joseph, so that, that plays a lot into it. You know, when we get in our older years, the last child seemed to be the, you know, kind of, uh, you know, you'd have been through a lot of ups and downs, so thank God this is the last. Joseph was the second from the the last, but his father makes him a coat just to show his favoritism. And then I love this boy. His father wasn't trying to, but his brothers didn't like it. So now to make the situation even worse in the 37th chapter of Genesis, God began to deal with Joseph. God began to deal with Joseph in his dreams. And this is very important here. Sometimes God will deal with you in your dreams. And it may not be the dream you have at night. There's some things that God put down in your heart that only comes from God's dream machine. That's all. There's some dreams that you have that you couldn't have thought of them on your own. There's some progress in life you're going to make our holy dreams. God began to deal with Joseph and tell Joseph that his brothers are going to bow down to him. Oh, that really made him mad. We didn't like you before when daddy was favoring you. Now you're talking about God's favoring you. So they decide they're going to kill Joseph. Come on now, the story gets deeper. The people you go around that supposed to love you now are trying to kill you. With their words, with their actions. You, you come to church to be loved. You don't come to church to get killed. You don't come to church to hear that they're talking about some mistake you made out in the dining room like it's a joke. You come here to get healed, to get love. And, and, and Joseph now, his brother says, you know what? We don't like him. We're going to kill him. So what they decide to do, they take him out. And they, and when Joseph's looking for him to drop off lunch from their father and all that, they decide, hick him that dreamer. Let's get rid of him. I'm getting you up to the 40th chapter where uh, we're going to climax it. But Joseph get out there and they decide we're going to kill him. So while he's out there and they decide, his own brothers decide they're going to kill him. Uh, one of the brothers said, we can't kill him. Let, let, let's, let's not kill him. So... God show favor. And, and, and that's another whole sermon within itself. Was it Judah or which one was it that, that uh, uh, um, Reuben, Ru Reuben, Reuben and Ju Judah came back after with another plan to make some money off of him. But Reuben says, and, and, and why that's another whole sermon in itself, because don't you ever worry about danger. That, that signified that goodness and mercy was following him around. Even when the rest of the brothers Wanted to kill him. Two of them came with a way not to kill him. God always have a ram in the bush for you. God always have a way for you to escape. And so, so, so they, they decide not to kill him. So they sell him to a band of gypsies, the Ishmaelites. The band of gypsies sell him to Potiphar, Egyptian uh, 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 official in the Egyptian army. Now, why that's so important is... 17 years old, God started dealing with this young, innocent boy, little shepherd, and tell him, you're going to be something for me. He never would have thought the next few years he's going to go through all this hell because God called him. Think about it. Did you realize that some of the stuff you're going through is only because God called you? Did you know that? The devil, because you're in God's hand, God is, the devil's trying to destroy you. Because God put a fence around about you, the devil's been trying to open that fence 
ever since God put it there. Some of the things you are going through is the devil trying to bring you down. But you've got to realize that even in the midst of that, God have allowed that to show you what you're capable of and what he's capable of. And so let's move on to the story. And I'm, I'm moving this thing quite fast. I got about 10 minutes. So Joseph actually, uh, he sold to Potiphar's house. Potiphar is the Egyptian official. And so the Bible says that even while he was a slave, that God was with him. When God is with you, it doesn't matter where you at. It doesn't matter who likes you if God is with you. It doesn't matter how much money you got if God is with you. He's a broke slave in Potiphar's house, and the Bible says God was with him. So what he does, he's doing everything right. He's, 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 since he's a good administrator, he's answering questions, he's being used, he's keeping the books. So Potiphar puts him over everything. Makes the devil even worse. Makes him mad. He's getting more favor. So the devil gets into Potiphar's wife. She says, hey, boy, let's go have some fun. She tells Joseph this. He says, I can't do that. I'm saved. I'm going to paraphrase it. I can't do that. Don't you know that the devil will do whatever it takes to make you flunk that class? Mm -hmm. The devil, will, he knows what you like. The devil knows you like peach cobbler. You like peach cobbler? No. Oh, well, the devil didn't know that about you. Uh, You're apple cobbler. I, I, I eat it, but yeah, I'm not what, What's your favorite pie? Uh, sweet potato pie. The devil knows that you like sweet potato pie. He bring a nice sweet potato situation to you. Yeah, and, and so, in other words, he knows your appetite. Whether you have chosen not to eat it, not to do it, the devil knows what your taste buds crave. You know, and, and, and Paul said, the apostle Paul said, when I would do good, evil was always present. It was a day that I said I wasn't going back to the bar that somebody called and said, you want to get drinks? I'm paying for them. You know, it's, it's when I said, when I was trying to be in the street, I couldn't get a date. The moment I said, I'm going to follow Jesus, the phone is ringing. The devil know when you're lonely. And I'm just trying to tell you, you got to pass those tests, people. I want to encourage you that God is wanting to take you to the next level. Don't you give in. Don't you dare give in. You're so close to the finish line. Don't you dare give in. You're getting ready to win this thing. Don't you dare give in. You're getting ready to get victory. Don't you dare give in. And you know, I got to say this because the Holy Spirit is telling me, if you fall down, just get up. Confess and wipe off and get back in the race. Don't get out of the race is what I should say. And so Joseph, he gets to Potiphar's house and Potiphar's wife tells him, you know, the devil knows that this man been in slavery for the past couple of years. Nobody's told him he looked nice. The Bible says he was a nice looking man. He was used to being around his house. His father's service telling you nicely. They said, the Bible says that his father made of him one of the better looking sons. So it was, he wasn't ignorant to the fact that he's nice looking, kind of like Elder Summers, he's a nice looking man. You know, he wasn't ignorant to the fact. He knew I look good. He probably walked like this. I mean, he walked out of the house knowing who he is, who he was. So Potiphar, so he was kind of lonely. The devil knew he was lonely. Nobody down there in Egypt telling him, big boy, you look good. Nobody's telling him, oh, that pretty coat you wear. He's a jailbird now, coming from a rich family wearing scraps. His ego's probably been messed with. Nobody's complimenting him. So he gets to Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife. I know your flesh. Need some comfort. You need, to, you need a hug. You need a kiss on your cheek. Joseph says, I can't do that. Because... If I let the devil ride, he's going to want to drive. You, you know how it is. So she begins to flirt with him and tells him, you know, we can have some fun. Joseph says, I can't do that. God's been too good to me. Let me just stop right here. Because you know the devil is trying to get you to do something that you wouldn't normally do. And God told me to tell you is because God's getting ready to take you somewhere you haven't normally gone. The only reason you're going, the only way 
You're going to get there. It's you got to pass the test. You got to show God you can trust me. I can get lonely, but I'm still your child. I can get hungry, but I'm still your child. I can be broke, but I'm still your child. They can put me in jail, but I'm still your child. They can talk about me. They can ruin my credit, but I'm still your child. I may not have any influence, but I'm your child. You can trust me, God. So Potiphar's wife tells Joseph, you know, Joseph, he comes in the house one day by himself. You know, she was kind of slick, you know. Don't you think this is by coincidence? Nothing by coincidence. She just sent all the other servants out of the house. We're going to have some fun today. He has on his another coat, the coat that Potiphar gives him this time. His brothers took his other coat that the father gave him. So then this is the second coat. He has on his head butler's coat. God was with, God moved him up even as a slave. God moved him to the top slave. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Even as a servant, God promotes him to the top. He's a top servant. She tells Joseph, you know what? You're going to have fun with me today, whether you like it or not. She grabs Joseph by the coat. and Joseph says, I got to get out of here. I, I, I can't let myself get caught up in this. Do you know a lot of us end up in sin or transgressing against God because we allow ourselves to be in the wrong place at the wrong time? Y'all didn't get that. People fall because they walk on slippery floors. If you know you're prone to fall, stay off of the wet floors. If you know that you get lonely sometime, what are you riding around with Susie at 2 o'clock in the morning? Well, oh, come on. I'm not trying to kill. I'm trying to help you. Uh, this, this, this is the prep course to take the SAT. You're getting ready to get your diploma, dear. I'm just trying to help you study. If you know you like attention, why are you wearing that outfit? And why are you wearing it there? Sometimes preparing for the victory means just as much to God as getting the victory. Because you would never be in sin if you had to prepare to keep the victory. Because you were in the wrong place. You know what, I, I, I might as well testify about this. When, when I got, when I came back to God at Christ's temple, I've testified, it's, it, it's no secret that I had spent a couple years doing some things that I shouldn't have done. But I had temptations that went along with it. And so what me and my wife decided to do that, I would never go back to the places where I used to eat dinner. And you say, well, you overdo it. We took the television out of our house. Was it two years, Jan, or just one year? Uh, took the tele I mean, I did this. It was no need of me watching television because I knew I had weaknesses. And, I, and I, I had chose to go with God. I chose to get promoted with God. You want your promotion, you're going to pass the test. Stop wanting something for nothing with God. You want your promotion, you're going to obey the word. You want to be used, you're going to put yourself in the position for God to use you. And so it was a place where they call it a pub in Indiana where they serve drinks and you get your steak. Then they have the best steaks. And, and I really love their steaks, but they serve liquor. When I get in there and I get the smell of liquor and I get tempted and all that, and I just come back to God 25 years ago, and I, and I just didn't, I mean, I... I ain't going to lie. See, some of y'all been saved all y'all life, but some of us haven't. Some of us walked on the other side of the railroad. Some of us been to jail before. Some of us told lies, a lot of lies, too. So I had to, I wanted to be, I wanted to be used by God. So I, I stopped going to the restaurants that I used to go to. I didn't even want to sit there in that same booth that I used to sit in and order a glass of whiskey. I didn't, I didn't want to do that because that always led to something else. And so and, 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 and up, I seen people, as a matter of fact, the owner of that restaurant, he saw me in another restaurant. And he says, why don't you come in the main event anymore? I says, I just don't drink anymore. And I had a glass of Coca-Cola on the table. I turned my head, he picked up the glass and smelled it. <laughs> <laughs> now what if I've been sitting there sipping in the wrong place, smelling like whiskey? Yep. 
but, but my point is, you got to do what it takes to keep yourself in the right place. So Joseph says, I got to get out of here when the woman grabs his jacket and he jerks her loose from the jacket and she keeps the jacket. So now we got two things going on. The first jacket his brothers took from him that his father gave him. The second jacket he gave up. What does that say? It's do what you have to do. Give up what you have to give up to pass the test. Do what you have to do to get ahead. And I'm almost finished, but I'm saying this because there are some people in here that are great leaders. And Sister Joyce, if God used you next to there, there's this amazing work that the anointing and the call that's on all our lives now, we need each other. Yeah. We need each other. Elder Hearn, I mean, there, it's something that you may say. Remember Zechariah and Elizabeth? They were John the Baptist's parents. You know why they were so blessed? Because God needed them to say to John what they said to John when he was a baby. Every one of us are here with a purpose. It's something that you may still have to say to one of these children that'll make a difference in their life. Because it came from you. What's going on? We have to pass these test people because God is getting ready to blow the roof off Paul Paul. And I'm not saying so much as that this sanctuary is going to be full. But I'm saying the work that God is getting ready to do, you're going to know it's God. You're going to know it's God beyond the shadow of a doubt. But you need, to, you need to be in your role. Let me finish up by saying this. So when she pushed Joseph's coat off, she decided to lie on Joseph. Tell her husband that the Egyptian that you brought down here, this is what he did. He came in to do this. And, and y'all know the story. I'm PG because of children and everything. Uh, uh, but uh, she, she, she lied on Joseph. And, and Potiphar, he believes his wife. And whether he believed his wife or not, maybe he was just jealous that his wife did that. I don't know. But he had Joseph thrown in jail. So they come and get Joseph, they throw him in jail. And that's where our reading was going to begin. But we don't have time to read that whole chapter, chapter 40. But when they throw him in jail, the Bible says God was with him. God doesn't leave you because the devil's fighting you. God didn't leave you because you didn't got afflicted. God did not leave you because you can't preach the way you used to preach. The power of God is still on you. God did not move away from you because you got five years older. The power of God, the anointing of God, the gifts of God are without repentance. Oh, ha, ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Devil tried to stop you a long time ago, but look what God is doing with you. Devil attack your family, but look what God is doing. Yeah. God says, I can trust him. I'll take him to the next level. Oh, my God. If you could feel the anointing that I feel up here today, God is trying to tell you. Oh, hasaka. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So now I built that up to go here. Joseph is down in the jail. This is the main part of this whole story. Then I can drop the mic. Joseph is down in the jail and two people down there. He's been in jail for 30, what, no, no, 17 years. Is it 17? Okay, my helper, 10 years, because it ended up 12. It was 10 years. He's down in the jail for 10 years because now he's about 27, 28 years old. God gives him a dream at 17 years old. He's going to be a pastor, and it ain't happened yet. God says, my, my gifts don't come with repentance. I don't repent when I call Kevin. It's just a matter of when I'm going to manifest it in his life. God said, when I made him a district elder, he's going to look over the district. I don't care what the devil says. God says, I made him a pastor. He's going to pastor whether he's preaching there or not. He's going to shepherd people. So Joseph is down in the jail. And the Bible says that the warden of the jail put everything in Joseph's hand. Isn't it funny how God, no matter where you go, goodness and mercy is following you around. That's my child. That's my child. Down in the jail, somebody begin to have dreams. And Joseph says, uh-oh, they're knocking on my door. I can interpret dreams. God interprets dreams through me. So Joseph interpreted their dreams. They go back and, and, and Joseph tells two of them. One of them have a dream. 
Pharaoh's butler, and one of them was his baker. What was it? The butler and the cupbearer, not the baker. <laughs> the cupbearer and the butler, or whoever it was. Well, anyway, Joseph interpreted their dream. He tell one of them, Pharaoh's going to restore you. He tells the other one, Pharaoh's going to kill you. Boy, I would have hated for him to interpret that for me. <laughs> he tells the other one, you, you're getting ready to get killed in a couple of days. Boy, I, you don't have to interpret that one from me. Just keep it to yourself. But, but he tells the one that is going to be restored. When you get to Pharaoh, tell him that I haven't got my blessing yet. I'm not supposed to be here. Anybody in here feel like that? I know the dream that God put in my heart. And I, I'm still, I'm still coming to church and doors haven't opened the way they should have opened. I'm still trying to be saved. And it seemed hard to be where I'm supposed to be. I'm still trying to be honest and it's getting hard. He said, tell Pharaoh when you get up there because what's even worse about it, God got me through this, but I see he's getting ready to bless you. He's getting ready to give you a million dollars and I don't even have a dime in my pocket. He's getting ready to fix a feast at your house and we don't even have a can of Campbell's soup in the cabinet. But he uses me to interpret that. How do you feel? I'm the preacher. I'm the pastor. I'm the missionary. And I see God blessing you. He even blessed you through me sometime. And I can't even hardly get a ride to church. I, I see the wicked driving their Mercedes and their Corvettes. I'm having a hard time keeping a Volkswagen. How does the saint feel? I see the dishonest preacher coming on TV asking everybody for a thousand dollars and the little chart going up while I'm watching it. 50,000, 60,000, 70. I'm preaching the truth. I'm almost finished. Just bear with me a couple more minutes because this is important. So the two people get out of jail that Joseph interpreted the dream to. And please read this when you get home because I don't have time to take you there now. I'm trying to shift gears and bring this thing home. And the two people get out of jail, exactly what Joseph said. One get out of jail and get killed. Pharaoh cut his head off, or hung him, and hung him out for the birds to eat off his head. The other one, Pharaoh restored. The person got their blessing, guess what they did? They forgot about Joseph. They forgot all about Joseph. I've been doing the right thing. Nobody even care if I get out of this ditch. But do you know that was just a test from God? Two years go by. Joseph now is 38, 39 years old. God gave him an economic empowerment dream at 17 that he will be able to manipulate the economy. First economic anointing in the Bible, Genesis 36. We'll teach on it later. First time God shows an economic anointing. That's right. God put people in your church that can manipulate the economy. Not dishonestly, but can tell you where the money's at for your church. Can tell you what to do to bring funding in for the ministry. God put people in the ministry with an economic anointing. But that's another whole class. I'm, Joseph is down there and the cupbearer goes back and he forget all about Joseph. He never tells Pharaoh anything. Oh, they're giving a big party, the New Year's party. He ain't thought twice about Joseph. Oh, Christmas time, he haven't thought twice. Well, obviously it wasn't Christmas time because it's well before Jesus, but holiday season, you know. Don't want to overstep my boundary there and say a little too much when staying the full truth. But holiday season came and he ain't thought twice about Joseph. That's the point I want to prove. The next two years, he's, he had to be going through just terrible. I want to encourage you. You've been going through something for a while. God told me to tell you, it's almost over. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's almost over. And if it seems like it's getting heavier on you, it's because it's almost over. If it seems like it's too hard to bear, because it's almost over. The enemy have tried to make you lose your mind, but it's almost over. The enemy have tried to make you doubt yourself. Can you even be saved? But it's almost over. The enemy have tried to make you feel that you won't live past next month, but that feeling is almost over. Midnight is the darkest hour of the day. But after midnight, 
morning starts to come. We're about 1150 in life. Somebody's five or 10 minutes away from the new chain. That song they say, in the midnight hour, he's going to turn it around. Things going to change. It's almost over. So if I had a few words to find, give you in these final remarks is hang in there. Don't you give up. Don't you dare give up. Hang in there. Don't you dare give in. Hang in there. If Satan tries to put you in jail mentally, you hang in there. Because even in jail, you will be the leader. Satan tries to discourage you and lie on you. You hang in there. God still will put you on top. Satan tries to mess your credit up, mess your money up. Hang in there. It's almost over. It's almost over. Don't you dare give in. Will you pray with me? Father, I thank you and I bless your holy name. We're gracious for your goodness and we're gracious for your blessings towards us. Every blessing you bestow upon us. Now, Father, I pray that you continue to bless us, continue to help us. Help us to take your word and hide it in the back of our hearts that we won't sin against you. Help us to acknowledge what you're trying to do. Help us to see even when the devil lets down the shades, you can show us our way around in the dark. You care for us, you love us, and you always have your, our best interest in your heart. We thank you for that. Now bless your people. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen.